Dr. Lisa Martin remembers when the large federally funded hormone replacement therapy study known as the Women's Health Initiative was stopped 10 years ago. I absolutely almost fell off my, my chair. It was uh, so astounding because we had thought all along that hormones were the reason why women had heart disease later than men. Results from one arm of the large randomized trial showed that taking the combination of estrogen and progestin increased several risks including stroke, cancer, and total cardiovascular disease. And participants were advised to stop taking their medication. And that's when the whole world went crazy, if you will, because the results were so contrary to what had been considered medical wisdom about the value of using hormone therapy. Dr. Vivian Penn has seen her share of confusion and controversy over the findings of the groundbreaking study, which continue to this day. The Endocrine Society, along with more than a dozen other groups, issued a statement on the 10th anniversary of the study's halt, saying, the results of the WHI and the conflicting reports that followed led many women to believe hormone therapy may not be a safe treatment for menopausal symptoms. We want women to know that there are options out there for relief of their menopausal symptoms. The level of risk depends on the individual, her health history, age, and the number of years since her menopause began. Dr. Pin said that despite the confusion, the study's findings can't be underestimated. It gave us evidence that is extremely important for women and their physicians, which is we should not be prescribing hormone therapy to postmenopausal women to protect them from developing cardiovascular disease, but that we know that the use of hormone therapy is fine for treating vasomotor symptoms such as hot flashes in the short term. The FDA has never approved the use of hormone therapy, menopausal hormone therapy, for the prevention of coronary artery disease or prevention of stroke. Meanwhile, the study, which was the largest of its kind, has proven to be a rich database of information that to this day continue to be analyzed. Dr. Martin has been one of the principal investigators for WHI for the past five years. We are still doing many uh, projects. Uh, we're up to about uh, 1,900 proposals uh, from the data that's been collected. So. The data in the Women's Health Initiative includes a lot of lifestyle factors that are just not available in other studies. So we can use those prospectively uh, in these observational studies moving forward to see what clues we may have to uh, what uh, lifestyles or other medications or other uh, interventions may uh, predict uh, outcomes in the future. It's always difficult when a study shows something other than what is accepted medical treatment, what is accepted medical practice, and that is what happened with the Women's Health Initiative. But it's really important that we do studies to test and to determine through the gold standard as we see it uh, in medical science, and that is the use of a randomized clinical trial, to determine if what has been standard practice based upon observational studies and based upon presumed wisdom really will do no harm to our patients. This is Nassim Miller.